So we shall now go on to Dr. Pritika Gandhi, who is a medical consultant, cornea and refractive surgical services at Arvind Eye Care Systems, Madurai. And she's going to show us a challenging case and she's definitely going to open up a lot more of the Pandora's box. On to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. A very good afternoon to one and all. Today, I'm going to talk about a cataract surgery that most surgeons don't like to operate. At least I don't look forward to operating in such eyes. So small incision cataract surgery. Please start sharing. Okay. So I'm just going to pause my video for a while to introduce my patient. So here we have a 41-year-old female patient with uh, microphthalmos, micropornia, and iris coloboma. So she presented to us with nucleosclerosis grade 4 to 5 with a preoperative vision of 1 by 60. Her intraocular pressures were normal. And uh, after a glaucoma clearance, we decided to proceed with her right eye cataract surgery. So she had an axial length of about 19.88 millimeters. And uh, we infused the patient with 100 ml of 20% uh, IV mannitol just before the surgery. So in order to dehydrate the vitreous and hoping to push the lens back and create space in the anterior chamber so that we will have space to maneuver the instruments while we are in the chamber. So I took up the patient under subtenons anesthesia. So I prefer subtenons over peribulbar or erythrobulbar as it helps to keep the globe soft. So once I finish the conjunctival peritomy, I proceed with the scleroponeal tunnel. An important point while doing the tunnel is to keep a uniform plane as making multiple planes will make the wound leak and cause more problems in an already problematic eye. So I then make a paracentesis and inject intracameral adrenaline and attempt pharmacological dilatation. I then inject uh, trifan blue and stain the anterior lens capsule. I then inject high molecular weight viscoelastics. I enter the anterior chamber with a bevel down keratome and make sure the entry is complete end to end. I then inject high molecular weight viscoelastics and assess the pupil. I realize the pupil is still very small. So I make 1 mm incisions on either side of the tunnel and insert iris hooks and put silicone stoppers in place. I then uh, initiate my rexus through the side port. As you can see, there is hardly any space through the main tunnel as it is already plugged in with a lot of iris tissue. So I try to make my rexus as big as possible. The anterior chamber keeps collapsing and I keep coming out and repeatedly keep injecting high molecular weight viscoelastics. So for those who are not comfortable using a cystitome, a good alternative at this point of time would be a rexus forceps. So as you can see, I try to make the rexus as big as possible. So once the rexus is complete, I'm just trying to complete my rexus here. So once it's complete, I give multiple gentle bouts of hydro dissection in multiple quadrants to release the nucleus from the bag. I'm very gentle with my hydro. So now comes the interesting part of trying to wheel out my nucleus into the anterior chamber. So with the spatula in my left hand and the Sinsky in my right hand, I try to wheel out the nucleus. I'll just pause my video for a minute. So I, it is at this point exactly I realized that the size of the nucleus is much bigger than the size of the entire anterior chamber. So with two thirds of the nucleus in the anterior chamber and one third still in the back, now I go in with my irrigating vectus and deliver the nucleus from the back straight out of the tunnel. So it's quite a traumatic sight. As you can see, the iris hooks have been displaced. I put it back in position and also put the silicone stopper also. And then I start with my gentle cortex wash. So operating on small eyes is more than a challenge. It's actually a curse. You can see the traumatic sphincter tears all over. But we have no choice. We have to get the cataract out. I do a very gentle cortex wash. The pupil has become very highly irregular because of the sphincter tears. And I try to make it as regular as possible. So we had already planned to do a pupiloplasty as a stage secondary procedure only if the patient is symptomatic postoperatively. As it's very well known in small eyes, a quick in and quick out, keeping the surgical time as short as possible is highly recommended. So then I place in a single piece IOL into the bag and dial it into the bag and do a gentle visco wash and remove off the excess pigments and viscoelastics. 
So to conclude, yes, SICS in microphthalmos is more occurs as it's a challenge as well. But the points to be aware of is to make a good tunnel, a big rexis, a very gentle hydro dissection, and keeping the procedure as atraumatic as possible. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all for the opportunity and thank you for listening. Thanks, Pritika. That was a very challenging video. So, Dr. Bhami, I would uh, start with asking you. Now, we know this uh, Brunus and Cataract and uh, Iris Coloboma, Nan of Kilmikai, all challenges are there. So, first thing, would you have advice for at least a beginner surgeon uh, to place Iris uh, a superior hook uh, so that it, uh, there's a greater protection for the Iris all around? And would you have advised removal of the hook before the nucleus being prolapsed as we would, as an exercise would be done? Uh, thank you, Chitra, first of all, inviting me here. Uh, yes, for a beginner surgeon, this is a difficult case. I think it should be done under, uh, under the supervision of a senior consultant, whether it is SIS, ECC, or a fake convulsification. Manipulation is the aim here. See, you cannot have RS prolapsing. It, it acts just like a floppy RS. Keep coming into the wound. Keep coming into the wound, swelling the RS texture and mixing the whole cortical material, whatever is left there with the aisle. Insertion of aisle, especially in a big incision is as difficult as any anywhere. You got to suture the lens Suture the wound first, make it small, form a good chamber, then insert, then remove the hooks, then come out. And I feel uh, it's a difficult case in any case. And you got to step by step follow as per the demand requires on this spot. And you should have put a suture for your large uh, funnel too, no? Or you, you might yes. have not mentioned it. My tunnel think? seems secure, ma'am, but I think a suture would have really helped, uh, especially in a floppy iris, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Ram Murthy or uh, Gaurav, one of you, uh, how would you uh, uh, think the management would differ if there was a lens coloboma along with the iris coloboma? Would you take some more precautions? I think both of them want the other person to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ram Murthy, I'll ask you. I think uh, very beautifully demonstrated, Dr. Pritika. I mean, in this situation, uh, nice follow up to what uh, Dr. RP showed. And in this situation, I would say that your technique is the best, given the availability of lasers, uh, advanced FACO machines, etc. This is a kind of situation maybe uh, SACS is uh, one which uh, will be the go to technique. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that uh, if it's associated with the uh, Iris coloboma, my technique would be any different. Only thing is that coloboma. Lens, coloboma. Would you think of putting a CTR2 is what I wanted to ask. Uh, it's a not large nucleus. Uh, if it's a lenticular coloboma is there, maybe at this area of the coloboma, the zonular, uh, zonule is deficient, but otherwise the capsular bag might have enough support. So as we go along, if I find that the uh, whole bag is uh, floppy and shaking around, maybe implant a uh, CTR. Obviously, that would be enough because it's not a progressive condition. No need for a helmet segment or a CONIS or anything. But even that may not be necessary in uh, many of many cases. And to be frank, I have not handled a microphthalmos with a heart cataract with a uh, lens coloboma also. So I'm just talking out of what I can conjecture. But I think the technique was excellent. And only thing, uh, just to find out what uh, I found I would do differently is that you went through, uh, while the second part of your making the rexes, you went through the main incision. I think with such a large incision, there's a tendency. You also said there was a tendency for the chamber to shallow. So completing the entire rexes through the uh, side port incision might have given you better control and deep, deeper anterior chamber. And secondly, uh, you know, that uh, nowadays we consider iris tissue as priceless. And in this situation, doing a, a pupiloplasty might be difficult. If we are not looking at a cosmetically nice pupil. I would be uh, not like to, uh, especially I didn't find that too many tags of iris collapsing out. The last iris abscission that I did, I might have avoided, but I couldn't have done anything better. 
Uh, what are the thoughts of expert panel? Anybody could answer for about doing a limited anterior vitrectomy or a sclerostomy when you know you have a very large uh, hard nucleus and a nanophthalmic eye. Would you believe in doing it or would you take it as it comes along? Uh, Dr. Can I, uh, yes, yes. yes okay. Yes, uh, yeah. Partha, you want to go ahead? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Sir. So in any case, you know that uh, choroidal effusion can happen in these cases. It is known, but I would take it as it is. And one of the, uh, I don't know, I would want to ask uh, Dr. Gandhi and maybe even Ram what he said. I would definitely wish to uh, keep phaco emulsification as the first choice over an SICS uh, because that will keep the things under control. Uh, you don't need to make such a huge rexes and the uh, majority of the problems in the iris and all came because of the hard nucleus that is there. Uh, with the great machines that you have and with the adequate fluidic balance, uh, uh, you can uh, actually uh, tackle such cases. And what you asked about the lens coloboma, normally it's not an extensive thing. It's only going to be at that area. And the worst case situation, you can put a capsular uh, uh, stretch uh, uh, hook at that particular point to see that the whole thing while you're doing phaco emulsification can uh, stay. So I would keep phaco emulsification as my first choice because that will keep things much under control. And regarding doing a sclerostomy, we don't do it uh, uh, as a routine prophylactic thing. And uh, as you said, we'll handle it if it comes because if a retina person sees at that particular time that there is some uh, issue that's happening, then you can easily go ahead and do that. But yes, uh, nanothermic eyes have definitely uh, a higher incidence of uh, 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 effusions that can happen. Partha, you have to add anything before we go on to Dr. Yeah. Pankaj? Uh, just, uh, yeah, I agree with my pal, sir. And uh, the thing that I just wanted to add uh, is that uh, the rexis in these cases is the most important one with such a hard nucleus. And especially when SICS is what uh, we are planning, then the rexis uh, is 6.5, even 7 millimeters would be important. Again, remembering it's a nanophthalmic eye, everything is smaller. So uh, here I would think that uh, before uh, giving the SICS incision, uh, four hooks to nicely stretch out the pupil, as well as a large rexis assisted by either a system or with the capsular rexis forceps, which becomes more controlled. Pritika was excellent. I mean, she's a very, very experienced uh, surgeon, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, you took two or three turns to complete that rexis. And inadvertently, if the rexis runs away, then in such a case, uh, it could be quite a disaster. So yes. um, that's a, a small thought that I you know, wanted to share. Chitra, can I also add one small oh, yes, pearl here? Yes, uh, yes, you know, I think everybody's covered and the surgery was done beautifully. Uh, I felt that, you know, when you made the side port with that side port blade and you did have access to those small blades later, you had the MBR also, where you, which you used to make the iris hooks. I would have not used that big blade and you went all the way across, you know, so that was a really big incision. And uh, while it might be good to have, but in a small eye like this, where there is upthrust and you're having visco coming out all the time, I would have made a very small, like a 22 or a 21 gauge uh, small side port for my rexis and for my side port instruments. You don't really need such a big one because it'll have iris and the visco kind of, you know, shallowing the chamber all the time. That's all. Otherwise, it was a very well done surgery. Yeah. Just uh, one point, ma'am. Uh, like sir said, yes, uh, just a MVR could uh, probably be better instead of a huge uh, side port. And regarding the uh, rexes, if you could have opened up the incision after your rexes, the tunnel could have been made earlier, but instead of taking the main incision before the rexes, could have completed the rexes by putting iris hooks and then opened up the incision. So then you could have avoided the shallowing and the iris prolapse. And I, uh, I just want to. I just want to make a point about SACS. Frankly, I don't do SACS. Unfortunately, I straight away shifted from ECC to FACO. And uh, uh, but having said that, and having access to all kinds of equipment, I still feel this in really hard, rock hard cataracts. I mean, there's always corneal edema. There's quite a bit, bit of time taken for recovery, chance of complications. When I pass it on to a younger colleague to go ahead and do a a good SACS, which many of them, fortunately, many of my junior colleagues are experts at. I find that even on the post-operative day one, they are getting excellent results, which I cannot promise with all the equipment that I have. So I do believe that uh, in this kind of situation, there is a definite role to play for SACS. And of course, uh, we need to talk about the customized IOL versus uh, piggyback IOL adding on, but paucity of time, we'll have to move on. 
but uh, nanotechnology ophthalmic eye that is one big challenge how do you uh, plan your iol power calculation